Major funding for NJTV News is provided in part by RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. NJM Insurance Group, serving the insurance needs of New Jersey residents and businesses for more than 100 years. And Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. Tonight on NJTV News, budget politics. The governor signs another bill pushed by progressives, but will that coalition hold through the coming budget process? A former high-level Chris Christie aide creates a think tank that holds its first symposium this morning on taxes. A young man died here, shot to death. You can't put a price on a life lost to gun violence, but you can calculate the cost of a murder. We have numbers. Plus, a student invention to help one wheelchair-bound person could transform care for many. And not sure you're ready to buy a dog? We know a place where you can rent one. Those stories and more next on NJTV News. Live from the Agnes Barris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway Center in Newark, this is NJTV News with Mary Alice Williams. Hello, and thanks for joining us. Progressive leaders are calling it the trifecta. First, women's health funding, then pay equity, now a paid sick leave bill. All big ticket items for a coalition that helped put a progressive in the governor's seat. But will progressives find themselves forced to pick sides? Senior correspondent David Cruz reports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were all there, members of the progressive advocates community, many of whom had worked on today's paid sick leave bill for years, only to be thwarted by the previous governor's veto pen. Today they gathered for another happy bill signing, but behind the high fives and hugs, rumbles of a disconnect, especially between legislative leaders and the governor's office. This is the trifecta, women's health, pay equity, and now earned sick leave. The Senate Majority Leader put today's bill signing into perspective. For progressives, these are the best of legislative times. But Weinberg acknowledged that going forward, the business of governing, at least the part about agreeing on a state budget, will get tougher. There'll be some arguing, some disagreements among ourselves and um, between the legislature and the executive but we will get together and we will have a budget that appropriately sets the priorities for New is, Jersey. Isn't it critical, though, to get the two uh, or three big, uh, the big leaders cojones, in the same? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I know who the three big kahunas are, and yes, it is critical. The kahunas being Speaker Coughlin, Senate President Sweeney, and Governor Murphy, who several sources confirm are still not talking, either directly or frequently. And while no one is predicting an impasse that might lead to a government shutdown, nobody is exactly ruling it out either. At the end, we'll have a budget, as we always do, hopefully not a few days late, um, and that uh, everybody will be in agreement on the direction we've taken. There may be a compromise, though. That always happens. To avoid a uh, shutdown, you Of mean. course, and, or certainly a prolonged shutdown. <laughs> we don't want anything like that to happen. Well, Governor, I talked to a couple of lawmakers a, who are expressing concern about your leadership because they've had an opportunity to talk to some of your subordinates, but get very little, if any, face time with you. Well, that's just um, our doors open and our lines are open. So Do that's you specifically? 100%. But whether it's taxes on millionaires or school funding or legal marijuana, the governor and the legislative leaders have reportedly not had any substantive talks. It's prompted Sweeney to call on the governor to get his hands dirty on talks to legalize marijuana, for instance, which is a $60 million piece of the state budget pie. Murphy continues to urge patience, noting that there are two full months to go before the budget is due. Some advocates fear being caught in the middle of the two factions, but at least one said a shutdown in the name of a progressive agenda 
is no vice. If we're going to have a fight, let's have it over the real things that impact regular people, their bottom line, be, their ability to stay in their homes, their ability to care for their families or, or to put their kids through college. So if we're going to have a real fight, let's have it over real issues that impact working families. When asked about the budget process, the governor uses a baseball analogy and says it's only the third inning. But some lawmakers might suggest a line from an old baseball sage who once said, it gets late early out there. In Trenton, I'm David Cruz, and JTV News. Economic conservatives put state fiscal policies into focus from their perspective at a policy forum that drew some heavy hitters on the national scene who weighed in as well. Chief political correspondent Michael Aaron reports. Regina Agia was Governor Christie's third chief of staff. She has founded Garden State Initiative, which held a symposium this morning. We asked her what she wants her group to develop into. You know, a really credible uh, think tank to address some of the uh, opportunities that we have in New Jersey to improve our economy and improve our policies for the betterment of, frankly, all the businesses and all the residents of the state. From a conservative viewpoint? You know, I'd say from a growth perspective. We're pro-growth. About 60 people attended, including U.S. Senate candidate Bob Hugan, Christie confidant Bill Palatucci, and former state treasurer Ford Scudder, the author of the group's new report on state competitiveness briefed them on his findings. The takeaway is that New Jersey's business tax climate is uh, not as competitive as it could be. Um, you know, certain states like Ohio and North Carolina have really done a lot to lower business taxes over the recent years. There were two panels. Arthur Laffer, the famous supply side economist from the Reagan era, joined via Skype from Nashville and compared New Jersey to a drug addict. When you look at this thing, New Jersey has become addicted to government spending, uh, forced union labor will lift out regulations in the state, uh, taxes, uh, as you, we've mentioned time and time again, uh, and the regulations. Those three are killers. You cannot tax an economy into prosperity, nor can a person spend himself into wealth. It just, it just doesn't happen. The discussion focused on what creates economic growth and whether lower taxes are essential to it. Look, I am a proponent of progressive taxation, um, but I think it has to be done mostly at the federal level. Um, the smaller the geographic unit, um, the more risk there is of outmigration. Senator Steve Oroho said high taxes are driving the rich away. Assembly Majority Leader Lou Greenwald said it's the property tax doing most of that. We are the state with the largest out-migration of residents in the country. Um, we know that the number one state they go to, ironically, is not Florida. They go to Pennsylvania first. A CPA offered this. At least once a week, if not more, I have meetings with clients about how to leave New Jersey. That's actually part of my job. Hanging in the air unspoken was Governor Murphy's proposed tax hike on incomes over $1 million to pay for schools, pensions, and transit. It doesn't seem like taxes are the solution to that. I think we've got to find, revamp the way we do things, do it more efficiently, get more out of our spending and better success. I think tax increases are, the issue is New Jersey not being not taxed enough. New Jersey's taxed too much. There are those like Governor Murphy who believe the state needs greater investment, and there are those like most of the panelists here who warn against higher taxes. The issue got a good airing out this morning. In New Brunswick, I'm Michael Aaron, NJTV News. Topping tonight's business news, a story that could have a megaton impact on PSEG customers. Standing by at the Strategic Development Group studio at the NJCU School of Business is Rhonda Schaffler. Rhonda? Mary Alice, New Jersey ratepayers could be subsidizing nuclear power for PSEG as part of a controversial bill sitting on the governor's desk. What those ratepayers likely were not expecting was to subsidize nuclear plants outside of the Garden State. But that is a possibility if the bill is signed into law. The CEO of Public Service Enterprise Group, Ralph Izzo, acknowledged that nuclear plants outside of the state would be eligible to receive the subsidies during an earnings conference call this week with Wall Street analysts. Izzo indicated that subsidies could be used to cover costs at several plants in Pennsylvania. 
Governor Murphy says he does not yet know how much the new labor contract with state workers will cost taxpayers. Murphy made that comment at an event in Trenton today, saying the details are being worked out. Yesterday, the CWA announced its members had ratified a new four-year contract with the state, which includes back pay. Republicans have criticized Murphy for that deal. Paying for long-term health care is a big issue facing the elderly and disabled. And today, New Jersey Democratic Congressman Frank Pallone offered one solution. He is proposing that Medicare cover long-term care. Under the current system, Medicare provides only limited long-term care, forcing those in need to deplete all their financial resources to pay for care until eventually they're covered by Medicaid. Pallone says a senior will spend an average of $140,000 in out-of-pocket expenses for long-term care. He did not provide cost estimates for what such coverage would cost the federal government. Private companies across the nation hired 204,000 workers last month, but that is the smallest monthly increase since last fall, according to a new report from ADP. The Roseland-based company also says small business hiring picked up a bit last month. Another firm, Paychex, reports wages for employees at smaller firms grew at their fastest pace in two years in April. United Airlines has announced a new pet transportation policy that will take effect next month after the death of a dog and several mishaps, including mistakenly flying another pet to Japan. The airline, which has a major hub in Newark, will only transport dogs and cats in the cargo hold, forbidding other types of pets. Additionally, it will ban several breeds of dogs from flying in the cargo hold. United says it's continuing to review its policy for pets traveling in the cabin. Wall Street sold off today, even as the Federal Reserve voted to hold interest rates steady, at least for now. The Dow was down 174 points. And those are today's top business stories. New Jersey's embattled corrections commissioner is abruptly retiring. Gary Lanigan's renomination to his post stalled amid an ongoing inquiry into sex abuse allegations at the state women's prison. A spokesman for the governor declined to comment on why the commissioner was stepping down months after being asked to stay on. Lanigan will be replaced by his current chief of staff, Marcus O. Hicks, who at his state Senate confirmation hearings will likely also face questions about how the departments handled sex abuse investigations. New Jersey averages a relatively low rate of gun-related deaths each year, according to a new report, but gun violence exacts a high price on families and communities. Senior correspondent Brenda Flanagan reports on the connection between lost lives and lost livelihoods. Candles and plastic roses mark the spot on Chancellor Avenue in Newark where someone shot Tyree Lamar Barba to death a few weeks ago. Online gun memorials note other murder victims from the city's South Ward, eight so far this year, and every homicide hurts the whole neighborhood where businesses lock up behind steel security doors at night. What time do the businesses here close? They close pretty early because nobody wants to deal with the drama that happens on the street and people suffer for it. So I'm not going to stay at this bus stop to go to work, to work the late shift because I'm not feeling safe because they over there doing something else. When someone gets shot, do you lose money? Yes, I do, because people are afraid to come in the area. Juanita Rowe co-owns Jay's Hair and Beauty Salon on Chancellor and sees revenues drop almost 50% for a while after a murder. People stay away. They stay home, you know, in the aftermath of, of that. Yes, it has a great impact on business and, it, and on people's freedoms. A new study shows gun homicides cost New Jersey more than $220 million a year in lost business opportunity between 2010 and 2014. It also figures each additional homicide in a city causes an annual loss of between $293 and $732,000 because people are afraid to work evenings and at night. Those stunning statistics come from the Giffords Law Center, named for the Arizona congresswoman who was shot while meeting with constituents. This is an area where we have an opportunity to revitalize some of these communities that have been most impacted 
And it's really a way to improve the economy while saving lives. The study breaks down how more than 2,000 shootings in New Jersey each year drain the economy, including health care costs at 93 million, lost income 918 million, and law enforcement and criminal justice expenses 131 million. The law center recommends violence intervention programs for shooting victims. People who are shot are at very high risk of being shot again or actually perpetrating violence themselves. So these programs actually intervene while the person is in the hospital and that creates this teachable moment where they're uh, open to a message of change. In Newark, the city's fighting back by recovering more guns. That's up 41% over last year and installing a network of surveillance cameras. A new camera's parked one block down the street from where Barbara was shot. How can we stem violence? Uh, policing alone will not do it. It's tough, but we have to address it uh, in other ways other than stopping the guns because, you know, again, it's a national issue. So we're going to do everything in power to residents. Uh, we're going to work with all the local businesses. Uh, many of them have cameras already. New Jersey's gun control laws are already among the nation's most stringent. Second Amendment proponents discounted the study. They're trying to make the Second Amendment a public health crisis to trick people into thinking that we have to do something and measures have to be taken so that people could have uh, harder access to exercise their Second Amendment right. Residents say anger management and more education could help control gun violence here, plus a stronger police presence and fewer guns. In Newark, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJTV News. A group of faith leaders is formed to have an impact on state policy and the budget process, starting with children's health care. Michael Hill reports. There are a new group of faith leaders and advocates who have come to declare a prophetic agenda that is unapologetically nonpartisan prophetic and grounded in a moral vision of a just New Jersey. New Jersey prophetic agenda says the Garden State has fallen way short of providing health care to all its children. New Jersey has one of the largest disparities in health coverage between white and Hispanic children in the nation, with Hispanic kids more than three times more likely than their white neighbors to be uninsured. That is inexcusable in a state that prides itself on its diversity and protecting kids. The agenda says it supports Governor Murphy's push for universal coverage and says it's time to expand the state and federally funded CHIP, the Children's Health Insurance Program. Not only as a moral imperative, but knowing that it is a choice we all need to make to show our children that we value them and the next generation. It should not be viewed as something that the legislators are going to give the children. It is something they must provide. New Jersey Prophetic Agenda says it's a nonpartisan group, but what it stands for sounds very liberal. We are a network of nonviolent love revolutionaries. Heads were nodding in agreement as Pastor Willie Dwayne Francois elaborated. All human being is sacred and all human being must live in a state, in a nation, in a city that honors that dignity by, by fulfilling the rule of sufficiency. We are declaring that race and gender and poverty and immigration status are no longer death sentences in our state. I would say it's grounded in a moral framework of justice across multi-faith traditions. And so if that's what it means to be liberal, then it's liberal in that sense. New Jersey Prophetic Agenda says its members already are working with lawmakers and they have faith it will lead to change. In Trent, Michael Hill, NJTV News. The blessing of the fleet, that tops tonight's Garden State Express. Our first stop, Weehawken, celebrating the nation's first ever regionalized fireboat dispatching system. It was inaugurated just last September. The unprecedented collaboration between the federal government and 12 local fire departments was funded by a million dollar federal grant, as well as millions in additional grants to pay for fire boats and equipment. Each of the local fire departments received fireboat dispatching services from a central dispatch center in Union City. The New Jersey Regional Fireboat Task Force aims to ensure safety and efficiency of critical infrastructure along the Hudson Riverfront. Next to Delran and a blessing from alums, facing declining enrollment and escalating costs, Trenton Bishop David O'Connell announced the diocese was pulling its annual half-million-dollar funding from Holy Cross Academy. 
That would have dealt a death blow to the only Catholic high school in Burlington County. But a 1988 grad formed a new board of alums and saved it. The diocese has signed a 20-year lease transferring the sprawling 94-acre campus to the alumni board that will operate Holy Cross as an independent Catholic school beginning July 1st. It'll be named Holy Cross Preparatory Academy, but it'll be known as Holy Cross. Finally, Blackwood and a blessing for those without a dog. Rent one. The Camden County Animal Shelter is allowing people without their own pooches to rent a dog for a walk in the park or a day at the beach or just a lunch break of petting and cuddling. The only requirement for humans is some time to get acquainted with their animals of choice and to get up to date with the rules and do's and don'ts of dog handling. The shelter says the rentable dogs are lovable and ad adoptable too, and some have already found their forever homes. And that's the Garden State Express for Tuesday, May 2nd. Something up in your neighborhood? Tip us off. is on course to regain control of the public schools for the first time in 27 years. The State Board of Education passed resolutions that trigger Patterson's transition to having authority over governing its schools and running programs and instruction. The state also authorized the Commissioner of Education to begin developing a transition plan to grant Patterson full control. Graduating seniors at Stevens Institute of Technology have capped their college careers by tackling some of the world's most intractable problems. The bright ideas they demonstrated at their Innovation Expo dazzled companies and agencies, and a friend and his family, too. Leah Mishkin reports. Hi, Peter. Hi, Valentina. Peter Vaca and nine-year-old Valentina Chichizola are good friends. She told me her big sister takes her to visit him after school. Valentina heard about Peter for the first time from her godfather, who went to his 30th birthday party. And I felt really sad that he couldn't do that. He couldn't do things that I could do because he, I heard that he was in a wheelchair. But he's very happy, and um, but he needs help with uh, everything, um, going to the bathroom, to eating, to bathing, and. Um, He's getting heavier, and uh, we're getting older, and it's, it's, it's uh, like I said, every, everything could help us. This nine-year-old wanted to help, so she asked her grandmother if she could take her to see her boss, the interim department chair for the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Stevens Institute of Technology. So Valentina approached me in the beginning of the fall semester and said she had uh, a great idea for a senior design project, so she demanded that we sit down and meet and talk about it. A group of mechanical engineers at the school heard about the VACA family and invented a device that helps to lift people who are in a wheelchair or elderly in and out of a bathtub. If you raise it into position, and then once you get to the desired height, you could just shift it over and then you would lower it back down. So all last semester was more prototyping and theoretical design calculations. And then this semester, we actually took the time to build it. Their device was on display at the Innovation Expo, along with over 140 other capstone projects. Each solves a problem in different fields like business, healthcare, and security. One team we met told us they're even going to Florida to present their idea to NASA. So the goal of our project is to generate a, uh, an artificial gravity like crude transport to get people to and from Mars. And the, lady next to Peter. the VACA family was taking it all in as the group of students who built the device took a group picture. Once we have it installed in our bathroom, it's going to make our lives so much easier for, because the chair can go right into the bathroom now and there'll be no more lifting him up and down. The students told Peter's father they named oh, their invention Pete wonderful. because it was inspired by his son. That's really, really wonderful. All thanks to one determined nine-year-old girl who wanted to help a stranger that she now calls a friend. In Hoboken, Leah Mishkin, NJTV News. And now 
some noteworthy facts that help you know Jersey. Some 1.2 million New Jersey workers will now be eligible to earn paid sick leave. Holy Cross Academy is the only Catholic high school in Burlington County. Once Patterson regains control of its schools, Camden will be the only district remaining under state authority. The Hudson Riverfront is home to the nation's first ever regional fireboat dispatching system. If there's someone who you'd like to get to know Jersey, share. Use hashtag no Jersey. Tomorrow on NJTV News, we'll be in your neighborhood, Montclair, the town where it's happening. You can join us live at 6 p.m. at Raymond's. To share any story you've seen tonight, go to njtvnews.org. I'm Mary Alice Williams. For all the men and women of NJTV News, thank you for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll all be in Montclair. The members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child. And PSE&G, we make things work for communities. PSE&G is building New Jersey's clean energy future. We're working to protect our network against extreme weather, expanding and upgrading transmission lines, and modernizing our natural gas system by installing new, more durable underground pipes. At PSE&G, our goal is to make sure you have the safe, reliable energy you need to power your life now and into the future. In every county across the state. I do like that Horizon is a Jersey company. It's almost like a sports team for us. It's like ours. In sickness and in health. You never think it's going to happen to you, especially being so young. Horizon has been there for me through everything I've been through. With experience and stability, we're behind you. You know, we're hardworking people in New Jersey. Horizon gets us.